Good morning. I now call to order the Enhanced Law Enforcement District Budget Committee. Let's do a roll call. Uh, James Rhodes. Here. Uh, Commissioner Schull. Here. Commissioner Schrader. Here. Commissioner Sabas. Present. Commissioner West is calling you. He is online. Here. Commissioner West, can you hear us? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Uh, Gavin Carver here. here. Okay, um, the Enhanced Law Enforcement, uh, the ELED Budget Committee recessed on May 28, 2024, agreeing to reconvene today, June 6, 2024. I will now ask the committee to continue the discussion, beginning with a presentation from Sheriff Brandenburg. Good morning, uh, Chair Carpenter and Budget Committee members. Uh, with me today, uh, again, is Under Sheriff Jenna Morrison and my uh, financial uh, manager, uh, Nancy Artman, and I want to uh, read over my uh, message that was sent to you, my second memo um, this week in preparation for this meeting. The fiscal year 24-25 Enhanced Law Enforcement District budget presented to you today, oh, sorry, uh, wrong side. <laughs> the ELG Budget Committee uh, met on Tuesday, May 28th, 2024, and at that time, uh, we were instructed to prepare and submit a 24-25 budget for the ELED. SCCSO originally uh, submitted 24-25 ELED budget needed to be balanced on uh, needed to be balanced per Oregon budget law. It neither depicted the negative financial trend nor the inability of the ELED to cover its full cost share. CCSO uh, was also instructed to submit the account line detail for the ELED budget showing the full share of costs for which the ELED should pay. Included in your revised budget packet uh, is the following, a suggested uh, balanced budget based on recommendations from county finance, the account line item detail budget which demonstrates the full cost share that the ELED should cover, uh, a deficit of 897,899. And then number three, uh, email correspondence between County Finance and CCSO with a suggested 2425 budget. Uh, it should be noted, as I testified on Tuesday, revenue generated by the ELED cannot fully cover all of the costs of the services the county it's the Sheriff's Office personnel to include materials and services provides to the district, and that, that remains. And that is the um, item number two that we gave to you, the account line item detail, uh, which is the 897899 And we would welcome any questions about the packet and the prepared budget for you today. Okay. Open up for uh, questions, conversation. I have just a comment. So, um, I just want to, in a cooperative spirit, just recognize uh, and express my appreciation to everyone in the room that we are trying to solve this mathematical, operational uh, ELEDs plight uh, with not being able to have enough resources or the tax rates not keeping up with the cost of to perform what's in there. And I know that the Board of County Commissioners in those different capacities and different hats um, have, we've talked about it, but we've never done anything about it. And today, this week, this budget season, we're finally doing something with it, starting with the policy, the higher end policy saying, which started last year, is that we don't want to, we want to make sure that, that our public safety sworn officers in all those fields, ELED, however they're funded, regardless, are doing, have the ability to do their work and they're fully staffed, ideally, we get to that point. So in that spirit, um, as I mentioned last week, uh, last Tuesday, um, you know, having that, at least from a mathematical budget standpoint, be very ever present, right? That we are acknowledging that policy and we are have a, a clean, you know, uh, ledger, if you want to call it that budget, that shows that appropriation from the Sheriff's General Fund budget to LED to backfill it is in the spirit of trying to make sure that, again, everything I stated pre previously. So I'm pleased that we're making progress on this, and I'm pleased hopefully by next year and going forward we'll have a, the actuals for that. And I take this, as a, as a, take this constructively. Uh, when I was thinking through this, I realized that 
and talking to past sheriff's employees, current employees of, this, of the sheriff's office in passing, operationally it's different, right? I know that when, when there's, a, there's, there's a call and all those need, officers need to respond to, a per, whether it's in LED or not within ELED, I mean, it, you're, operationally it's different. And I know it's difficult to track every hour, every minute. It's not really possible to do that. But in the best interest of that, I recognize that while it looks one thing on budget, it's another one operationally. So again, I appreciate the fact that there's that cooperation. Um, maybe at a different time, we can talk about how the public can see that distinction, right? You know, I mean, something as simple as maybe having an ELED, a car that says ELED on it. I don't know if that's even possible. That's not a topic for today, but, but I just want to make sure that I can tell folks that are in the ELED dis district that they were meeting those needs that it spells out in the measure that formed the district in the first place. So um, I said a lot. Uh, Sheriff, I'd love to see what you have to say. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and, and we heard you. I, I've heard you when I took over as sheriff. Um, frustrating not to get information out about statistics in the ELED. We actually have that. So um, if on our website um, we have a, um, access to calls for service, and crimes that happen. And there is an ELED overlay that you can um, plug in and look at just the ELED and the calls for service, the crime, the crime trends. I actually have some of that here. Um, this, the ELED for the most part is in our you know, major calls for service. It's the busiest districts of the county. Um, and that, for a reason, right, that we, um, Back in 94, when this came about, uh, we needed additional staff in those areas. So, but we can, uh, people who live in the ELED, who pay, pay the ELED um, uh, tax rate, can go there and access that, that data. It's updated monthly. My staff worked with County GIS to get the information. Every single uh, household that has, uh, that pays the ELED tax is in that overlay. So there is information, um, like I said, and that was one of my main goals taking over as sheriff that um, people should be able to see and have that transparency. Right, right. And I also want to just say, um, you know, as a result of the county budget committee's actions last Thursday, that we've set a policy direction for that cooperation and being able to do the county aspect of that. So I'm really looking forward to see how that integrates into that. And you know, again, from my perspective, thinking about since Tuesday, that as we, we're going to sit here today, that we will actually have be some detail and tracking as to what the actuals are for ELED versus being kind of fuzzy, if you will. So that's not a criticism. It's just an observation that we haven't set a policy direction. Now you have that. Now we're acting on that policy direction of we are going to make sure it's fully staffed and we're going to fully meet that. And um, I'm just pleased that we're at that point. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Would you like us to go through the spreadsheet? Um, would that be helpful for you? For me, it would. Yeah. Yep. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. We're right. all talking from, from this here. Yeah. Which, which, sorry. Um, there's two things. So, and, and I just want to be very clear. So we, we, um, we worked together on um, last week to try, or this week. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long, been a long couple of weeks. Anyway, so we worked together this week. Um, we uh, had a suggest had a suggested budget. We put together the line item budget. We weren't able to make the line item budget balance, and so what we did was we took the suggested budget, the updated suggested budget from county finance. That's what this is. But what we do want to do is we want to walk through the line item budget so that. Because the, the, the suggested budget, it balances, and I appreciate that, but it does not reflect the costs of the ELED that you have asked for. So I can walk through both. I can walk through, it's, it's up to you how you want us to walk through it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not in charge here, uh, but, but I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to um, say I'm interested in hearing that. And it was when we talked to our staff here, um, my understanding is that um, we're going to do our best to build the budget, and if there's any shortfalls or whatever, we'll take care of that in, in the um, uh, 
supplemental budget. Thank you, just to say amendment. The supplemental budget. So we're going to constantly monitor this to make sure that it's still. So I want everyone to know, sheriff, staff, and the public to know that even though it may not meet that, we're building a new budget and a framework. So we will, we'll, again, back that up with the policy where the board said we will not, we'll make sure every sworn officer position is filled regardless what, what, what district or levy or general fund they are. And I appreciate that. And um, I just want to make two comments. One, the, 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 um, the personnel pieces are being covered by the levy, but what we've heard from you is you want to know the full cost, excuse me, and the levy, <laughs> ELED, um, but you want to know what the full cost is. So it's a portion of office supplies, it's a portion of telephone and internet, it's, it's the vehicle repair, it's all of those things. Um, I also wanted to comment on, we did, I feel like we did get somewhere this week um, working with um, Elizabeth and Sandra uh, we have a kind of tentative agreement that we're going to put into um, writing until the IGA can be updated, which is that starting on July 1, we're going to start direct billing, and I'm going to say it wrong, it's 216? Yes, 216. Um, and so, so, that should, so that should clarify it. Um, we will be um, creating some negative interest because on July 1, there will be no money in the ELED, but we've been told that that's perfectly fine and that's how we're gonna move forward. So I just wanted to also update you on that fact that we have kind of come to a tentative resolution. We just need to get some things in writing. Okay, great. Elizabeth? Thank you, Chair. So I've actually, we've created a handy tool for this presentation for, C and CCSO a Sheriff has not seen this yet, but what I did is I compiled what Nancy's put together of the line item budget with uh, the column um, that's from 100 for fund 216. And then that actually it lines up against what the budget presentation that you have also. So this might be a handy tool instead of flipping from page to page. I'd like permission to hand this out. Okay, sure. So I can pass it that way. And then for, <coughs> for them, for the staff there. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. We're going to post this on the screen in about one minute. Are we able to put that on the screen so we can walk through it? Yeah. Oops, sorry. So who wants to speak to this, Elizabeth or Sher or under Sheriff, who, or who, Cindy? I'll start, if okay. that's all right. Go ahead, please, yes. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, so um, in, two, in the first column, the pink column, I believe that is what is currently in open go. Oh, no, excuse me. That is our line. Thank you. That is our, um, that is the budget with the um, costs that, um, the full cost of the ELED. Um, the the orangish is, the next column is the, um, obviously the one that is in open gov right now. And then I, I can't speak to the green one, so I'll let you speak to the green one. Um, so um, as we walk through, 
Um, I believe we are um, uh, we're a little bit different on our beginning fund balance, and we acknowledge that that's kind of a moving target. And as we were, um, you know, shoring up the um, end of May uh, ELED, we are almost we're pretty much diminished. So we estimated more of a twenty thousand dollars. So there's this, that's the difference between the beginning fund balance. Um, I think everything else is pretty much the same. Um, when you the, fir the first, when you see full-time wages to the, the workers' comp, that's just the personnel. It's also reflected in other contracted services, so that's about $6,852,587. Um, which now will not be in a separate, it will not be, going forward, it won't be in Fund 100, it will be in Fund 216. Um, the insurance liability is what it is. Um, the office supplies, postage, telephone and internet. I mean, I don't know how much you want. I mean, they're kind of self-explanatory, so I don't know if you want me to walk through each one of them or what, what kind of detail you want me to explain. If there's any questions, I, these, are the, these are the full costing of what we believe the ELED should pay as a program. It's, it's fair share. Okay. Why don't the, Elizabeth, you explain why you had a different column then? Please. So yeah, thank you, Elizabeth Comfort Finance Director. So the there's the white column, pink column, orange column. So the first two columns are the uh, amounts for running the program, the ELED district from the sheriff's office. And then what we did is we looked at what can the fund itself bear, what can the tax dollars from the ELED support, and so that is in the orange column, and you'll see that there are minimal dollars there because uh, the primary uh, purpose, or actually focus, that we thought we should focus on for the tax dollars are the staffing of the 36 FTEs and um, the insurance, and then also for the overhead. And then there are some other costs that do need to be covered. So we have the far right column that we'll talk about in a bit that we realize that the general fund does need to support these 36 positions. And I believe that's what has been happening in the, in the last couple of years. However, it's been happening in Fund 100 and wasn't clear. And so we are, we're being transparent with that. And so that's what we want to show with this is that the first white column is really costs that have been occurring in Fund 100, and we want to shift them all to the ELED fund, which is 216, what we referred to as. But uh, so then the tax dollars will be, um, the programs will be supplemented via tax dollar, or excuse me, general fund, if the board would allow. And so that would be a recommendation we would take later to the um, Board of County Commissioners after the beginning of the year. So just for clarity, so um, in the green column, that transfer or subsidy, if you want to call it that, transfer um, is 400000 correct? Yes, we believe that would be the um, minimum amount that the general fund would need to support the ELED. Right, and I guess that, again, the supplemental piece, if needed, probably will be needed for all of this again. Uh, we can address what the actual trend, trends show to, to address to make sure that we're meeting all the needs of ELED. Right, and I will add, as Under Sheriff Morrison said, that we're going to uh, show and demonstrate all these expenses for this program uh, within the fund, and so that'll become more apparent what we need, more more clear what the funding is that we need. And so I guess I, I want to ask for clarification. So, um, and I appreciate I appreciate some the the green column. I, I think we're getting closer, right? Um, but what I'm hearing from you, Commissioner Savas, and I, like I said, I want to make sure I'm crystal clear, is that there's no vehicle replacement in, just for example, in the, um, in the proposed, to, in the orange column or the green column. So if we, no, not in vehicles, there's not. So if we replace a vehicle in the ELED, are we to charge it to 216 and then ask for a supplemental budget to recognize it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask staff to, to answer that question. Yeah, I, I think we need to look at the vehicle purchases, and so that'll be a question I think that we need to look at during the course of the year and the okay. needs. Yeah. Okay, I just want to, because I, I don't want to be going down a road that I think that this is what we're being told to do and then do it wrong. Right. I appreciate that. 
Cindy? A, a lot of blank spaces in the green column. Um, what? Sorry, <laughs> there's a lot of blank spaces in the green column. Um, the challenge that we were having was that we didn't uh, see um, all of the, everything in the, <laughs> I love doing our budget by colors, but um, in the pink column, we didn't see the charges, so we really couldn't see what the trends were, and so that's why there's nothing in the, in, um, the pink or in, in the green column in many of these areas, because we just didn't see that um, in the report. So we'll be able to look at that moving forward. And I appreciate that, and that's the challenge that we've been having, is that we haven't been charging it there because we haven't had the money to cover it. So, yeah, so I think what I'm hearing is, and we'll be discussing this throughout the year, is that we will charge the costs to 216, and then, then we will create a trend. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Commissioner West, or Commissioner Schultz, sir. Uh, um, question uh, some folks might be asking right now as we look at the future of the ELED district how soon before the IGAs uh, are up for review with those cities that do benefit from the ELED district and what's the potential uh, in that review to alleviate some of the pressure on fund 216 so the cities do not fall in the ELED. The cities are separate. So, um, so they are separate. And we are renegotiating the um, contracts with the cities. We're, they're at county council right now, so we're almost done with that. Okay. The IGA, I am working with county council um, to update that. But in, before that is updated, we are going to have a tentative agreement to make sure that July 1, or very soon after, we will make sure that we are charging directly to 216. Okay, good, thank you. I was curious, uh, in, in the past on the ELA, you did funds came in from the general fund, is that correct? How much How much was it last year that came in from the general fund? It looks, I mean, obviously right in this proposal, it's 400,000, what was last year? I'm gonna let uh, the Sheriff's Office, it's actually been running at a deficit, but maybe Nancy can assist. Thank you, Chair Carpenter. So I want to make sure that I'm understanding your question. So you are wanting to know regarding deficit or you're wanting to know related to general fund? If you could just please clarify the question. So I'd my, be happy to address it. And I apologize if this is a very basic outside That's of government okay. question here. But so my understanding, the ELA can't fund itself, right? That's been pretty correct. clear. Correct. So we're getting money from the county and the general fund, is that correct, to cover that deficit? For the current fiscal year? For the previous in years past, so the previous um, the previous fiscal year, last year was the first year that we needed assistance from the general fund, and it was pretty negligible. Okay. This year, however, we just completed our supplemental budget request, and we believe it'll be about five hundred thousand okay. dollars when all is said and done. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Sure. Yeah, I had, I had one other. Uh, when you were responding to Commissioner Scholl's question, um, I am presuming, well, I don't know. I'll just ask the question because I don't want to presume. Uh, the contract cities, is there a separate, in, internally, a separate budget so that we're almost mirroring the same process? Okay, great. So we'll be able to see that. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so th it, when we get done, it'll be just like that. So. Um, It'll have its own direct billing, it sounds like, um, and we should be able to capture the costs and see the trends and, and, and whatnot. And also, Commissioner, within the budget, each of the cities has its own program, so you can see distinctly if you're interested in Estacada versus Happy Valley or Wilsonville what that looks like. Yeah, I can't tell you how excited mm -hmm. I am that we're cleaning <laughs> this up. <laughs> So if I'm reading this correctly, the, the green column will basically be a supplemental proposal down the road, is that correct? To cover the difference of the... Supplemental in the, FY, in the next fiscal year. Right, okay, okay. Great. 
Chair. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, Sandra. Uh, Sandra Montoya, Budget Manager. Um, so, Commissioner Savas, you asked about the, or uh, one of you asked about the past, and I just wanted to clarify, as I'm looking at the system, in the general fund, where we should only be seeing personnel, because the materials and, uh, and services should be paid and capital should be paid out of the ELED, we are seeing materials and services and capital in the past. So, I, I think that the subsidization has been going on much longer, um, but because it hasn't been transparent, it, it hasn't been very clear. So now that we've got um, better systems and better alignment, I think we're going to be able to see it more and report it. And certainly once we uh, close that general fund program, we'll be able to report that to you. Yeah, I, I, I guess you're right, Sandra. Um, uh, it's not, I mean, maybe the choice of words could be more, like we, we couldn't see it before, right? It wasn't clear and it wasn't, we, have, we couldn't have any trends. So I, I think you're right. Mathematically, it had to have had extra funds because it's, yeah. it's, this is not the first year that it, there's been, so to speak, support from the general fund portion of CCSO. So I'm just looking forward to be able to have those trends, be able to see it now. That's, what's, that's, the, good, that's the good part. But to, to the question... It's really, it is not clear. We really don't know exactly what it is. So, and that's not displayed in any one of these colored columns per se in that detail, because we really don't know, right? In the system, I can see where the general fund has uh, paid for materials and services and capital outlay. And, and just from the explanations that we've got, the general fund should only have been paying for personnel and it should have been reimbursed. So it should have just been an, a wash. But that's not what we're seeing. Uh, but again, this is after the fact. And so now it's, it's you know, that, that hindsight um, is, is 2020. So now it's about cleaning it up for the future. And I think we're on the right track. Right. Just want to be able to look forward. Right. Yeah. Comments at all? Okay. Just to make sure I'm kind of clear on this. So, sheriff's budget is nine hundred thousand dollars short. You guys are saying that four hundred will come in later, and the green columns that gives a five hundred k shortage. Am I looking at that correctly, or? Finance says. Um, at Based on what we know and the, and the information, we're looking at a $400,000 supplemental potential if needed. But that's all going to be tracked. That could go up, could right. go down. Right. It just depends on what the data is showing. Okay, perfect. So it, obviously last week was went a little sideways. It wasn't as bad as a year before's budget committee, which is a bit of an S show. But um, it sounds like a lot of it was about transparency as well, um, which I think everybody would support is, is a good thing to kind of see where the money's going. Um, I'll just say it as a... Again, just as a citizen, with this completely outside of as far as the government proceedings go, everyone I've talked to and, and the ELED that I live with, that I work with, that I coach soccer with and all that stuff, the number one concern is really crime and homelessness coming in, as I'm sure you guys hear all the time as well. And so I think people get very wary when there's potential for, you know, the sheriff's budget to be messed with as well. But um, it sounds like, a, you know, that's not, you guys aren't capping that right now. It's just a matter of getting greater transparency and then um, we can make sure that we're all on the same page. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, and, I, and to that note, Chair, I mean, another way of looking at it, just switching hats, putting on my citizen hat, I guess I'd be grateful to the county that we're, we're backfilling ELED to live up to ELED because the other, the, the, to do it the other way would be to say, all right, I'm sorry, LED, ELED, but you all, we yeah. who live there, I, I live in it, um, are going to have to take a, a major cut because we don't have yeah. enough revenue to pay for it. So I think we ought to be recognized that. Yeah. Because of this policy shift of where we're going to backfill it, so to speak, um, is a win for everyone. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Or, or increase the revenue as well. So. Or go to, the vo go to the voters yeah. for yeah. a tax yeah. increase. So yeah. that's a taboo conversation. So. <laughs> so. Any other comments, questions? I will now entertain a motion on the budget. I move that the Enhanced Law Enforcement District Budget Committee approve the FY24 25 budget in the amount of $8,925,074 
as presented with appropriations of $8,925,074 and impose the district's maximum permanent tax rate of 0 $0.7198 dollars per thousand of assessed value within district boundaries. Second. Okay. It has been moved and seconded that the Enhanced Law Enforcement District Budget Committee approve the budget for fiscal year 2425 uh, in the amount of eight million nine hundred twenty-five thousand dollars at seventy-four dollars with appropriations of eight million nine hundred twenty-five. $1,074 is presented and impose a district maximum permanent rate of $0.7198 per 1,000 of assessed value within district boundaries. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Hearing no further discussion, clerk, would you please call the poll? Commissioner West. Aye. Mr. Rhodes. Aye. Commissioner Scholl. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Chair Carpenter. Aye. Chair, the result is 6-0. Bill result is 6-0 and the motion passes. Is there any further business before this committee? Hearing none, this committee is adjourned.